And the boots start to stomp. T size start for G2. One map. I was going to say up. It seems like they've given. Ooh. Interesting. Good shots. And problems now for Mantu. He'll be calling for some help. A nice catch from MBK already. Swarming up. They don't want to plant here, Lauren. They just want to fight. I mean, they're bringing those Glocks to the optimal area, right? They are just going full battle round pistol. Mm. Very curious, but it works so well. Yeah. He's on one today, isn't he? Yeah. He's on one today. Must help to have that, right? Well, like I said, he, he dropped off a little bit when they played last time round. It may have even actually been more than a little bit, if my memory serves me correctly. He was going into that as one of the highest rated players in ESL1 Cologne. And then when the two teams met in that quarterfinal, Ooh, it didn't uh, didn't pan out in the same way. It was actually Kenny who was top of the scoreboard. But you're bang on there. The Glocks, they're taking away the territory. You all know at home, the Glock, it, it doesn't shoot as sharp as that old USP. But it can be brutal up close and personal. Same as this shotgun on MBK <laughs> and the MP9 in the hands of Valder. It's very loud, isn't it? MBK is going to be transferring that information to Valder, who now tucks his tail in between his legs. Oh. And hopes he doesn't get timed. Could Does exactly get timed, actually. That couldn't be a better example of it. Turns away as his teammate comes into focus. I, I do love seeing them playing with a great deal of confidence and intent. Whether it be oh, just yes. these all-in hits, just barreling through. I hope it sets the bar going forward for what we can expect from G2, because I really don't want to see that passive or timid team that we saw before. T-side is a little different, of course. He's going to find Nexa as he does go walkabouts through towards CT spawn. That's, uh, I guess, Mac, Mac 10 filtering through. But the others do have armor, of course, so... Keep in mind, they'd probably like to keep some of that. It certainly wouldn't go amiss into the next round of play. Oh dear, that is oh. not the way you wanted that one to go. Not only did Issa have their MAC-10, there was a scout in play which is now gone to do a chunk of damage and not a, the one more little key. So Issa had the Deagle as well. So they could have dropped that across mm. and they could have had at least four potent weapons going into round number three, but now, uh, it's probably just going to be the eco, maybe some HEs if they're feeling generous. That's frustrating. I haven't really had a look at Issa and his room in a while, so it's it's good to see. He's got these lanyards up there on the wall. Don't we all? Game of garbage. Everyone's got it. Big box of tangled lanyards that you convince yourself you'll make something cute of sometimes, and you never really do. But we're old, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Kenny, still sprightly like a young grasshopper bounding into the B site. I really do like this animal-based commentary. Do you think you could give us some... Uh... Just more? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was try I was trying to think of an animal that could be fun to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. But... I mean, you just have to make kind of metaphors that become more and more stretched out. Wow, the nice work, though. And Hunter grabs himself six, twelve, eighteen hundred dollars. The Apex Predator, of course. Absolutely. Of train. I do think Apex is one of the cooler names. Oh, you could do, is, you can do so much good. A very cool there. name. Yeah, the Apex Predator, like top of the food chain. Apex of his game. Apex of his game. Yeah, it's great. Not so much just for the caster perspective, just because you know people wouldn't bully him for saying, "Oh, my name's Apex." They'd be like, "Oh, that's cool, man." That well stuff's hurting you, isn't it? <sighs> it's, <laughs> it's stinging. <laughs> I'm called Pansy. I mean, let's I mean, be look, honest. at least it's let's not a love machine. Honest. We got rid of that one quick. Did you like my birthday card? I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> another time, Azamanek is already out. The man is on the prowl. Ooh. And as I said, a greater predator is currently looking for a bit of a meal, but the trades are coming through here. We do have the 4v4, but we've got two teams really posturing for that early dominance. Both of them, you know, chests pumped up posturing as to who gets the yard control, who gets the player out, who can really bring it home. And this is a change from last time. Instead of getting stalled out and then having Alex very astutely point out Issa has a smoke with 20 seconds left and locking them out of main, they've actually made a decision to go on back and now hit the inner side. This is quick. Valder's in retake. Yeah, and that's a very, very hard shot to hit. Takes Kenny off. Makes it a plan. Contested by Alexi. Bomb still goes down. Jax to push on up to Oil. And so Nexus has got one alley of his push covered. There is one slight gap in this after plant, and that will be the flank. Not currently a threat. In fact, they can kind of just play it as if it wasn't a threat at all. Looking for his lines of sight. This is a viable 2v4 here. A clean headshot not found. That was his chance. And 
We did get a second, a third bite of the cherry. Now a little sour. Grab himself OG's first. So good to break their silence early. Let's not forget that this is the second map of the series. OG 1-0 up and this is G2's map pick. However, the map that OG uh, stormed them through over on the quarterfinals of ESL 1 Cologne. Chad's outlined it. That's the last half say of it. It will jump for the info, bounding off the, uh, bouncing his head off of the door frame to get his boots and accuracy back quicker. So last time it, with the game that you're referencing, it was a 10-0 streak, right, to kick off the game for OG. So we're already in a different position than what we were. The game already looks a little bit different, at least in regards to how decisive G2 want to be and how much Warp in, uh, presence. Does it go Aggie? Yeah. I think man too fancies something. Yes, he does. Look at that man go. Avoids the flashes, holds the line, decides um, better of it. So it was short-lived. And the flash in brown holes is going to be indicative of presence there. At this point, though, the gathering is towards Ivy. A flashbang or a molotov. Oh, what have you got for us there, Kenny? That looks very promising. A front of Z smoke all the way from Ivy. We've seen the alternative thrown out by NIP's twist. And Alexi just can't believe his luck. Collect a free double. Mantu gets the last in the back. The stragglers massacred. Next up, unfortunately, a little late to the party is just been kicked out down to 10. Won't really get to participate unless his teammate Hunter makes some room for him. Over the E-Box Ang. That's spicy from Valda. Very work, good work. Double kill for him and he'll grab himself anything extra he can find. Grabs an AK-47. NBK needs a drop. He'll grab one. G2's money is a little skew whiff. You won't necessarily be seeing all those AKs into this one. This is the double kill from Alexi. I'm glad we're seeing more of the Org. Yeah, I think it's still a very viable weapon on certain maps. We saw Simple using it earlier today on Nuke, obviously. Great success. On, yeah, on Train on the CT side as well, the Rangers. You can obviously hold some angles a little bit more uh, statically. Statistically, you know, where is around. it pound for pound? I actually don't know too much about it after the firing I know rate was like, nerfed right okay, so the so issue that's... the issue with was before it was you know the firing rate with it was so quick it was time to kill was very yeah. short yeah oh. ttk i think rush calls that that's rush that, is that, that right that's ttk ttk yeah so where'd you hear that one rush uh i can't remember to be honest i where, think i might have used it where I mean, was it the call of duty reference i suppose they use it a lot when comparing guns in Call of Duty. Okay. Well, it was a new term to me when I heard Rush say it to me one evening. Yeah. I remember it from Armour and other yeah. bits and bobs. It's, it's a, a very commonly used phrase that Chad's unaware of and so assumed no one knew it. Yeah. That's the ego uh, in question. Quite driven. Wondering. Yeah, that's the Calls extent, Rush into question. The extent to which it goes. <laughs> oh, Rush, I've never heard that before. Rush, they must be, you must be making that up because I've Rush. never heard it. Come so, on, Rush. Rush, have you made that up? Uh, I've never heard that. I made that up, yes. Yeah, it's Rush sense. original. Yes. Wow. Incredible. Okay, double orbs, guys. All right? All right. Here we are. He's horrible, isn't he? <laughs> he looks over, just seeing the pain. And um, speaking of pain, this could be a bit of a painful round for those tees. Uh, no real pointy end of this stick. Don't know why that reference gets used so much, but it does. And uh, the old boomstick doing very well there, holding back. No losses either for OG, so keeping everything clean exactly how they'd like. Bouncing back quite readily. So... I'm, I, I want to see, as I said, I think for me, I know that G2 can play this pretty well. Mm. I'm, I'm happy enough with what we saw from, from OG. I want to see G2 just looking a little bit more proactive. If they've picked back into this map, you've got to hope there's a little bit more fire in the belly. So I love to see what they can bring now. Well, the fact that they did get a five-round spree last time they played to close out the first half G2, that wasn't too bad. Like the 10-5 half was serviceable. It was the way that things started. It was just like, oh, these guys look like a shadow of themselves, especially considering the way that map number one went. So he's already started in a better stead. But Inferno, the way that that just tapered out, that was a little bit of a problem. We saw uh, things slow down for them. They couldn't find any solutions. And OG were doing a fantastic job individually across the board of locking them out. There's Quick. the scores. Yeah, look at the scores. Let's see what's jumping off the page. Nothing uh, is the answer hmm. to that. Mm. Lexi's still playing well on train. I guess that's a good one. That's something. Yep, certainly. And of course, you can see that the equal pairing of uh, three rounds in a row does convert to a rather similar scoreboard for both teams. No one standing out above the pack. No one with the spawn they want to use into this one. Double orbs for the, T side, for the CT side, though. So should we see that T side get that bomb down with something a bit more pacey? There's a higher likelihood that OG will have to cut their losses and accept their fate. 
And Valder seems to agree because he's early smoke towards the ramp. He has considered that Brown Halls is uncontested at this point in time. It's a vulnerability. And they're actually going to push for info here. Check this out. I reckon Mantu's going to flash him into main. Yes, he's mollying it. Yep, they're going to get all this info right now. I don't know if we've seen the T-side yet hit that nice on flash. a gun round. This is lovely. Valder is under so much scrutiny. Look at him. Forced away. Beautiful take from the T's. They just need to stick the landing. Oh, that's gorgeous. Good stuff from G2. Love the flashes from Nexa. I'm sure we'll skybox that in a moment. For now, five to five on the retake. Nexa so low. <gasps> Should have been a frag. Is a frag. Valda converts. Now the blood's going to start getting drawn a little quicker. Quickening the pace. Drops down. Kenny does not look like a promising frag. Yeah, that's the end of him. And it's all on to Amanek and Jax. Bomb. Not even half gone. Plenty of time. Kit on Issa and Alexi. Flash as well. Jack's wrapping around from Z. He has the flank. He can finish this, but it's on a timer. And now he's lost his teammate. He has to knife out. If they get on that bomb, it's a problem. No, Alexi caught. Issa to react. No health. And he does get them both. Jax saving G2. Crucial moment of the game. Orp not quite scavenged. He knew there was a Rowan around, but we'll get to see this one now in Skybox. Now, you wanted to see those flashes. So next to him. Panning them off the wall. He was actually getting shot as that came in. His HP dipped on down. But there's the flashes into sight. And I love how thorough they are. So smoke to block one, two, three positions here. And the Molotovs galore. Look at that. That was like four Molotovs on the back of the bomb train to make sure that Valda couldn't be in his little ratty angle. So they did a great job. They took sight control. Still came down to a close one. But let's get back in the action. Yeah, I'd love to. Let's have a little look. Because at the oh, yeah. moment, we are jumping into a fast Ooh. hunter push. Look how far he's got him up. And this is the dream for a train team. Then you have a player, throw a flash through that smoke, you walk out, you get two kills, and it's over. Not always as easier said than done. A smoke towards Ivy, though, has been deployed, which will definitely isolate Alexi, force him onto that bomb train. How much room is he being given? This is the first time we've seen this, and that's huge, massive impact. The double stack towards Pop could still be a problem for the rest of the T's, however. Util being put down, you just see the flash coming through. Issa, and I think it's, yeah, MBK, kind of posted up in a bad spot now. Nowhere feels safe at this point. They've got support coming in from Mantu, but the T's haven't really followed up on this pace yet. Look how far back he is. He's in backtracks. And there's another back turned. He could get caught out here, though. Alder's on the hut. Oh, I see it. Did you see him? There was an elbow. He looks alert, and he does take the head off of the Dane. They know that's the inner holder as well. He can lock them down. He can actually completely lock their rotate out. Jax is already doing some of the heavy lifting, but yeah, Hunter has won them this round. Look at where his frags have transpired all over this map. He doesn't have to continue to hunt. He can continue to basically communicate that Backtracks is the only possible rotate, and next is going to fill that gap. So this is probably a save call. This is off to Ivy, so that kind of backs that one up. So we can talk about anything you fancy. Yeah, I just want to uh, go a little bit harder on that Valder point. So obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the setups from the CT side, they are known. G2, if they will see a player out of position, that might help them with a little bit of information. And the fact that Hunter takes it out, that's why you could see they were so quick to dip on back, go through the box holes, get towards the inner side, well aware that the regular defender on that side of things, he ain't there. So they will allow... The two players of OG to save. Mantu and Issa will hold on to their weaponry. No problems just there. With a tiger tooth. Isn't she nice? What were those toys you got as a kid that came in a little tube and they were kind of like Transformers but not? Everyone had them at like Christmas time. I had to like kids. Transformers but not. Yeah, they were like little predator dudes. I'm trying to remember what they were. Because it reminds you of that knife so much. I need to find out. I'm looking. Two them up. Bionicles? I, uh, yeah, I think that was it. Bionicles. They were, they were like a Lego product, right? Yeah, well, yeah, it was like a yeah. branch of that, I think. But there, there was a whole lore. And yes, there I, was I think, a story I, behind it. I think I got it. like that. It was! It was them! Yeah, oh, uh, my God. It reminds cool. me of that. I think I got a Bionicle game demo um, with my cereal. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had that down. I, play, I smashed that. There was lore. There was the... It was all kind of like kind of Maori slash like yes. it had like a kind yes. of... A very cool theme. Anyway, that's the end of my Bionicle TED Talk. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Appreciate it. All of that, and three Molotovs buying them enough time to completely clear the site, call it clear, plant the bomb, and poor old wow. OG. Can't really make anything happen with their two preserved rifles from the round prior. What about Furbies? Oh, that was not a toy a for me. You had a Furby? I had a, had a Furby. Furby. Um, I freaked my sister out because I, I, she was really annoying me. Um, we didn't... <laughs> She was my half-sister, still is, of course. I say a lot of things in the past tense very weirdly. <laughs> Didn't get rid of her, still around, of course. Um, you know, and as kids was, I was the older one. 
and yeah. she still is the younger one. Uh, and she loved her Furby a lot more. She had the little pet dog as well, oh, all okay. of that. She was the spoiled middle kid, annoying. So I uh, ripped the skin off it, like you can take the fur Skinned off. Skinned her Furby. And I left it in her room, and she she cried a lot. You animal! I was a horrible little child. I was very jealous. Very okay. jealous. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't cross Lauren, ladies and gentlemen. That's I've one grown thing up. we've learned. I've grown up. Lauren likes the skinnier Furbies. <laughs> <laughs> they get really weird. Have you seen their eyes without like fur around I don't it? Don't want to. Not very cute anymore. It's like Barbie dolls with that hair. They are scary oh, looking as well. I've, I've heard they get they start sounding like kind of like they're under the influence when they're running out of batteries. Batteries go. Uh, yeah, There's some very slurry. funny clips. They start slurring their words yeah. and stuff. <laughs> oh me. <laughs> it just sounds like me drunk. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, six three. <laughs> okay, so six. Back on a decent done better. Fire, They've done better on their tee half now than what they did in the previous, so this is looking good. And potentially setting us up for that third map. Ooh. But two, that was quick. Yeah, if look at the wrist, that was real fast. It's him finally getting success with it. He tried it a couple of rounds ago. No one was really there. Back to where this time bangs them out. Now, early advantage. Bit of time for those double orbs to get themselves into play. And Jax, if he just continues to poke his nose where it doesn't belong, Mantu will have to remind him what he's capable of holding that upper position. The fact of the matter is that he probably won't be moving for a while. Amanek's still maneuvering that bomb through the halls, and that will be their go cue. So hold on a second. Looks like an inner execute again here. So they have to really deal with Volder. Mantu should be smoked off. Okay, so he's going to go on the first flash then. And he does get some space. Valder's got a lot to deal with here. Oh, and he's played that well, the patience. And now he arrives above Kenny. Oh, unchecked. Finally fragged. Nexa can't transfer. Bomb down. That's the consolation. Maybe he can clutch it out. Oh my, oh my god, I said maybe. Nexa thinks yes, an ace clutch now on the cards. I did not believe the words I was speaking. Unfortunately, he needed man to. He'll tidy us up and put OG's fourth on the board. Well handled from him. He got the first and the final frag, the bookend frags. A little shout out to Bardol for that one. I do want to highlight as well for me, so on, like we've been seeing Mantu kind of shining a bit here and we saw Alexi B before being a bit of a headliner. I really like Valde's value on B. Mm. He's actually been a really nice, like, safe pair of hands to a degree. Or at least he's getting a couple of kills every single time. There's always something going on for him. So I've enjoyed what he's been bringing throughout. Yeah, Valda in this team, at least in my mind, was meant to be the star. Right? When yeah. I looked at every other player here, Valda had a period of time over there in Denmark where he was in his team, which would have been North, just a, a superstar. Then the in-game leading stuff happened, and we all know how that one tends to unravel. But let's focus on the game in front of us here. Is into pop next to drops, and MBK says no, no, no. First time we've really seen the fight for pop, though, with these two players. We've only had Issa and MBK. K pushed up to this. Hunter's picking up where Nexa left off, and well, Hunter's just succeeded where he left. So that's a bit of a difference here. Two players working up through Ivy as well. Gonna have to try and challenge Alexi B with the AWP still. So Kenny posted up on top. Just gonna be propped up to see if anyone looks for any information. For now, the CTs though, completely evacuating B. They want to get pop control back, though. We can see them posture up close. The flash will come in, so that information is that nobody's home, and it alleviates a little bit of pressure on this yard play. Alexi could be a freebie right here. Kenny is coming. Oh. Surprised having Amanek shoulder peek into that line. Not a jiggle. Oh, Kenny. Always going to equal out, it feels, but... It's still coming towards B, and this is going to be down to Alexi B. Already did very well towards Ivy. You're going to see... Oh, I thought he was going to succeed right there. Jack's going to try and make the cross. And well, he's been given a second shot here, Alex. Rolls him down to 59. Top spin. And it's good. Going to be G2 falling flat in the final steps of our... What was that? 11th round, second map, second series, first day, 12th season of ESL Pro League. Lovely jubbly. Five. Now, this is T-side train. Worth reiterating that T6 posted already from G2 is, is dramatically positive signs for a third here. And so, taking a quick look as to who has been contributing the most. Hunter, we saw a couple of his contributions just into that pop dog equalizer. <clears throat> and Kenny did find a couple. The timing on this, if that molly was one or two seconds earlier from Jax, then Issa wouldn't have been pushing down, potentially isolated to Jewel. 
Kenny obviously going down the back lines there to Valder. Not ideal. And it looks like they're going back for the inner set piece. So you can see all these Molotovs out once again. There's four of them. Working with three smoke grenades and a bunch of flashes. They haven't lost the opening this time around to the aggressive play of Man... Uh, yes, of Mantu. So if they're able to get in the positions we've seen them in previously, they might be able to go for this in a hit one more time. Oh, again, that one is going to hurt a lot. Well to 55. Yeah, that's just timing. That nade looks so useless half the time. That one, quite the opposite. So many flashbangs oh and fire. God. Look at this, Valder can't find a safe haven. He's had to just moonwalk into smoke. So by the time he leaves them, Amonex there to collect the pieces. G2's inner hits have been ironed out. And still OG doing well to contest here. Bang on. I'm, I'm amazed that it's down to, what, a 3v3. That looked so all-encompassing. Hunter trying to be aggressive. Alexi B instantly quells this. And now Kenny and Nexa. Nexa on the MAC tent. Kenny, of course, on the AWP. And it does look like, where is Issa? Smoke is? on Issa, and he has yeah. a kit. So he's kind of the defusey boy. Great work, Kenny. Keeps it level, loses his life. That's Issa revealing his position with only a Mac 10. This is tough for Nexo. He only needs the one frag. Reveals. He needs to get away. Does go down. Do they have it? Looks just on the nose. Ooh, mama, six for OG. Alexi B with three kills in that round. We'll get to see some of them again, but that was real patient work from him. Didn't want to let it get away from them on that AWP, second AWP on Alexi. And you can see how they worked their way into the site. It's such a cool take. Like you can see it's got real method to its madness. So many flashbangs. There's a real shot, like a real chance. If you're an inexperienced inner player, like throw Kirby into it during his establishment and phase. Suddenly your flash, you could just be flashed into mollies. I yeah. mean, you'll be relocating yeah. into flames. And that was the detail that was different, right? Before either the molly was flubbed or thrown by someone else and it didn't actually push Volda off the back of that train. Hold up a second here. Volda going very aggressive. He's heard it and now a oh. chance to spam down, but Jax with a huge deagle opening. Oh, and Mantu's only got the AWP. That's not going to enable him to find more than, well, I was going to say one. He does re peek into Amanek, knows they're only on pistols. Uh, open plant, maybe Kenny can do something. Taken down by Nexa. And he's just going to go ahead, take double as well. Poor old Issa. Hunting. Deagling him down. Just a war of attrition here. Eventually he wins it out. Hunter's Look gone Hunter. round the world, yeah. It's an open plant. We did get that little bit of information. There's no way that Issa would be expecting the flank to come in now, surely. No way, Jose. He wouldn't take this shot, would he? He would. Not concerned. Not threatened. Grabs himself an AWP as well with grace Very and nice. poise. Seven on that T side, it's boding fantastically. And let's see Mantu's attempt here. Yeah, five targets he can call. It's definitely an inner at this point. The repeat just as the molly arrives. So that's a little gap for him to exploit, but it's next to keeping things safe and sound. This double kill, just lock it in the round. And what a different look from the T's here for me. I, I was worried when I saw G2 before, of course. It was a little bit shocking to see them feel so flat, but this is reinvigorated, aggressive, precise, and. Ash going to slow down Jax's roll slightly, but the CTs are on those pistols. Deagles, CZs, they do have a couple of rifles, but it's few and far between. A little bit of a B-lane to start with, but not where the T's currently are all heading towards, but slowly but surely filtering that way. Go on, man, too. Oh, that's bomb. Not something you can actively hold, though, but this pivot could be held out by Issa. CZ, definitely a good weapon for the job. Change of strategy, back towards inner. Catch that. Found the gob right there for Issa. But it's very clear that they've been going for these inner hits, so a rotation now that team main has been cleared will probably come towards that inner bomb site. They should be cheating another member over, just considering how these rounds have panned on out. Alexi has a bit of a hint, it could be Ivy, but he's wrong. I guess they have at least both their rifles here, but one's about to go down. Mantu, how is he still alive? Jax makes it through, but... I don't know how they're still standing. It's phenomenal work. Kenny thrown into an impossible scenario and they've done it with just the recovered weapons. Really big fragging coming in from Mantu on that low HP. NBK will steal it away. Mantu getting some credit and they get some weapons. That's an AWP AK recovered. It's going to help them nurture their wounded bank accounts because they are. It helps them have a real shot at making this an 8-7 half. Actually taking the, the win, if you will, doesn't necessarily always feel like a win on a map like Train, but you can see G2 certainly not feeling like everything's going their way. So they've got a bit of an odd buy here going into what will be the last round of the first half. Kenny has the big green out. Let's see if he can find some impact with that. Will he just be going for the spam? Yes, he will. 
Nobody on the other side willing to be connected upon. A deep Molotov towards main will hold him at bay. And, oh, heavy aggression here from Alexi. He needs to be careful how wide and how far he wants to push because look who's waiting, Amanek and Kenny. Both aware that there may be some aggression coming in here. So you know Kenny really likes that wall bang, Chad. Mm. Like, I've watched a lot of Train G2, and I know he always does that when there's a molly or something stopping him. I wonder if... If you watched enough demos, you'd be able to determine that Kenny doesn't do it when they do inner hits. And the sound cue of him just firing off a shot at the start of the round would help you put your CTs in the right place from 10 seconds in. Look, all those little details and tendencies are the things that we talk about when we are discovering how these teams look to exploit one another. And here is a fake. So towards that inner bomb site, they're throwing the same smokes, similar Molotovs, and they have four players from OG biting into that bait. It's just this man here, Isa, has to deal with the T's coming out main. He's gonna be caught off guard. Yeah, completely. Uh oh, wow, that's a big gap. Exploited, caught in transition. You can see how far Jax jumped away, made the transition into the Yamanek much more difficult. That's his moves benefiting him. G2 looking to collect that eighth, a victory on the T side train. Great shots from Kenny. Looks like NBK has got way too much on his plate. And yeah, Kenny confirms it, triple kill from the French sniper, G2. That's quite the T side and definitely justifying their map pick here in the rematch at ESL Pro League. We'll take a break, we'll be right back.
not dead yet. They are certainly still in it. G2, eight rounds on the T side of train. Now heading into the second half. It's insane. OG having to pull it back. Valder taking a moment to contemplate and to center himself. As we head back into the fray, on this time and on this broadcast, we have myself, Machine, Pansy, and Spun J. See the bookkeepers of this one. Or do they make them? I don't remember. Either way, OG have the edge. All right, Let's well, get into this. Here we go. Well, this is going to be quite the round, I feel. Already off to a blistering start. The P2K out and about already going to claim one head. It was with Hunter in tow, but God, these pistols have been so brutal. We saw that Glock train on Inferno. It seems like the pace isn't going to stop particularly either. T's do make it to B, but they don't quite make it to the site just yet. Lexi B still yet to cross, but I mean, we're barely 30 seconds into the round here. Yeah, good shots from Jax actually really going to cause a problem because the remaining players are low. Ooh, and he's doing good work though. Valder. Chance onto Kenny S. They want to double up onto this frag and they do manage to isolate him. Jax to clutch. He has a smoke and a kit, so very viable. Very realistic. He doesn't have to rush this. It seems he is though. Trying to... Gifted one on one. So Lexi right to wait it out. And now as he peeks into one, Lexi! Oh. Shots in the back are hard. Valder does manage to pick up the pieces. It's a quad kill from him in the pistol. The Dane flexing just a little on the international roster. Very, very close there for a moment. Isn't it? Oh, dear. Back of the head, it's always hard. It's just the, trying to predict how someone's going to move like that is always oh, difficult, wiggle. you know? And, and look, the question you go, well, should I just shoot him in the, like, the back? Should I avoid the head? Well, look, you want to get him out of the server as quickly as possible. You're always <laughs> going to be aiming for that headshot. Wow, double scout. The Eagles, we've got Nades. This is potent. This could be a this could be a juicy round. Let's see yeah. what they do with it. Love me some there's scouts, one tag. and there's already some damage being distributed. It's going to make the life of NBK so much worse. Amanek does his finishes off himself. And that's the scouts doing their work. A little bit too much space taken early, and... Oh, no. Oh, no, that was an AK. And it's just been delivered right to Jax's front door. Oh. Taken from him through the smoke. Mantu's listening to his comms. Mantu's having a good shot at this. Kenny gets away. Vulnerable. Oh, Nade no. not quite bouncing far enough. My goodness, Mantu's playing a good game here, and Alexi's found space. That should be heard right now, so the rotation... Or oh, maybe not. I thought it was up close. Maybe some over it on top or something. Yeah, I thought he was closer up towards Pop there next, but now they know the jig's up. They're heading over towards the inner site. Alexi being forward. Low HP at this point. I don't think it matters too much. Yeah, Kenny's going to check this though, right? Oh, wow. Great connections. Kenny didn't get a chance to pull the trigger. And now Mantu adjusted. Nexa got the reaction speed. Alexi's just trying to play the right angle. Oh. And dropping off the inaccuracy. Alexi with 30 points of health gets two more kills and a MAC-10 to boot. That's really going to hurt the G2 Bowies. I'm seeing, what, 3k a per player? Let's see that one again. This was where I thought it would go awry, but Mantu with a hero spray through the smoke. The comms are there. Oof. Just, and that is just enough. Yeah, wow. 17 again for Alexi. He has been taking a leaf out of Nexus book, leading from the front lines. That was a close one right there. Just like the pistol, it's been close rounds all over. Yeah, we'd love to see it. That's the type of Counter-Strike we've signed up for here today. Alexi will drop that AK over towards Issa. He's got himself a MAC-10. And now, with the space, telling his teammates where they are, what he's heard, and where to go. Dinks are coming on through. These pistols should be mopped up relatively easily. I don't think we'll be looking at it such a convincing or close round as in the previous. Hunter's taken out of the equation next to the last man standing, and he will fall to Alexi once again. So as we move into what will be round number 19, the buy will come out. Kenny should be able to get the AWP up here. Nexa is the inner bomb site anchor. Hamanek over towards that Ivy position. They do have a kit on Jax. A timeout being taken from the OG side of things. So really wanting to set the tone here before they get stuck into the second half. And it's important to do so. I said on Inferno that Alexi has a tendency to have like a bailout call or like a gut call that he likes to do where he feels that they're going to be playing like heavier mid. So he likes to pop out holes. Well, there's a round that he likes to do where they throw the five and the e-box smoke and they try and get one player out just to cause a little bit of uh, concern on the CT side and then just do a low ramp hit. Relatively contact-like. There's not too many nades, nothing crazy in terms of the, chore the choreography that we uh, have seen and highlighted from G2 within that first half. And with the bonus weapons, this is the type of round where you want to throw something a little bit different at them. So 
Let's see if they do use that favorite play of Alexis there or if they go for something a little bit more spicy. Lots of nades on board, so I would like to see them use them. And here we go. All right, let's get it going. Kenny on the orb. We got it all coming out now. Mac 10 still left over. This could be a fun and East is going quick here. Yeah, and the flash is good. He gets out. Ramanek's going to have his vision. Phew, never mind. Blackout handed out by Issa. And that's oh, enough for him. Away. That is enough for him. And wow, Hunter and Kenny, the Jax, they all know. Around. They all know. Nexus made the call. The rotate's coming in thick and fast, but he's lost his life in the process. And so did Kenny S. I don't know what NBK just did. But it's enough to win them the round. Jax won't be around much longer. That was pretty much the exact play that I was talking about, right? You saw they went down low ramp without any real utility. It's to catch the rotation off guard of G2. G2 knew as much as I did, so it feels like we all do our homework, but just didn't hit the shots. And Jax will finally get another or get one for the round, but if they let him hold on to this, it's a big freebie for him. The hunting continues. They should keep throwing bodies at him. Everyone's clawing on in now, two from Ivy. One from T-Spawn. It's only a matter of time for Jax here, I think. Yeah, with the 20 HP, three people pushing him. <laughs> Good night. All right, well, OG are coming alive here in this second half. I thought with how close the first half was that we maybe would have been seeing ourselves on course for what would be a third map. But like I mentioned at the top of the show, OG are now starting to convert me. Their consistency as individuals are stepping up. They're actually starting to, to slot in together quite well. I love that Alexi just feels like home on train. Leads by example, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah I, and when you have an in-game leader who can do that, it it's, you know, adds so much confidence to the team. When you have an in-game leader who's like your second or third in and he's not really getting a lot done, Alexi's the first in and he's getting a huge amount done. And look how much room Vald has taken this time round. Slipped out to Olaf, not too many nades and flushes to help him to get there. So maybe they won't be ready for his position. Speaking of ready, bye-bye. And now they can continue their walk up. This time it's IV and Jack's crosshair was just a little too high. NBK crouching under the crosshairs of Kenny as well. Looking good for a 12th here. OG really have got the number on G2 CT side. This is T side train. Back to back victories up against what have been weapon rounds. Of course, this one not the case. But four so far. This will be the fifth out of an 8 7 half. Quite spectacular to get OG so close to that 16 mark. I remind you, they did win their map pick. This is G2's chance to re have a rebuttal. I'm curious to think if OG were expecting Train to come through again after what happened last time. Like, yeah. oh, gift? You're going to give us this gift again? Brilliant. We'll take it. And G2 may be kicking themselves now for picking back into a map that they were handedly dealt with last time round. Previously, when they matched up in the quarterfinal of Cologne, it was a 16 to 10 scoreline. BBQ. <laughs> I just looked into those uh, ESL history backpacks. They actually look really cool. I swear there was a dude when I worked at ESL, so we're talking a couple of years ago. Mm. Right. There was a guy that was making them for fun out of ESL's branding. So maybe he's just, you know, he's kept, it, it. kept it going. And now maybe they did a little nice deal. Kept the yeah. dream alive. Yeah. I like that. Couldn't tell you his name. I swear. I... Years we're going oh. back now, yeah. He was a cool dude. Made you backpacks mean? out of... Uh, ah, no, never mind. I've, I've worked it out. It didn't even work for yourself. Worked for DreamHack. Damn. Someone else. But okay. he did make those backpacks. But we like the idea, yeah, though. Yeah, his name was Wolf. That's cool. Wolf. Wolf. No, it was Ulf. Wolf. I called Not him, Wolf. I called him Ulf de Wolf. Ulf de Wolf. But he was called Ulf, yeah. I see. No, that's excellent. So shout out to him if he's still, still around. Yeah. No, I, I think it's really cool. Like, I, I want the old, like, the oldest, like, EMS one. Like, what's the old, horrible one you got in the back? Give me that. <laughs> I don't take anything at this point, apparently. Honestly, freebies. I'm pretty sure my entire wardrobe Every is... morning we come in, Lauren's opening a new bag of goodies. It's You it's do ridiculous. have... It's like Christmas every day for Lauren. I just ignore those emails. Like, hey, we want to send you some oh, sweetie weebies. Do you want them? Daddy PUBG sometimes say, hey, you want a new mug and a pair of socks? I'm like, all right, go Sweet, on then. Sweet, man. Love a pair of socks. Who doesn't? Well, Lauren like probably Christmas. has quite the cheapy cabinet, I can only imagine. I actually don't. Well, we might have to... with plants. I have to build a one, chocobo. Lauren. What are they called? Those little... um. Plastic figures that big all of the classic Oh, I don't have any of them, them anymore. That was um, a big nade. That was a chunky nade. Was that through pop? Yeah, so they've actually thrown that up through the windows, I believe. That was... I've never seen it do that much damage, damage before. Wow. Well, they're softened up for this one. That's promising for Nexa and Kenny. 
who are set up in the most default of default holds. He's going to be smoked off, repositioning as the flashes do come in. Incendiary to buy time, and there is plenty of it on the clock, so this isn't going to deter them. That fast flank through pop is very, very possible as well. Look at Hunter. Look at that. He spotted the bomb. Alexi has no idea. This is a disaster. This is for oh, oh, no. Mantu. What a quick flick. He's anticipating Amanek as well. He's ready for this now. Oh, Hunter's going to be punching the desk. I'd be so mad. I had a game-winning flank. Pulls the pin to bait the oh. shot back's turned, and now that could cost them. Kenny's got another shot in the booty, and it does look like it's all curtains for Alexi. Three to find. Amanek's oh. head quick. Oh, and he's darting back under the train, trying to bait these shots. Orp fires off one. He's faffing around with his oh. knees, and I love it. The Molotov's good. They have kits. They're going to have to fall away. They have the smoke, and so... It's all good in the hood. Kenny to defuse, but a valiant attempt. That was really cool. If Alexi pulled that off with like the 360 Molotov jumping on the train, you know, it's that around. would have been really cool to yeah. see. I like the idea. And Mantu almost bailed them out of a massive hole, but you're right, that frustration for Hunter right there, that's, uh, you hate to, those timings, that's when you, you know, you, <sighs> oh, I can't even put it into words how filthy that one feels. But there's an opportunity to bounce back. It was still a close round. They did get the bomb down. The T's making sure they're still getting the main objective of Counter-Strike underway. And we, once we get this one back underway, we'll be able to see what type of buy we're looking at going forward. I just had a look again at where that nade came from in the previous. It was Amanek throwing it from the bomb train. Well-timed. He did uh, quite a lot of damage to Alexi, Volder, and MBK. So half HP for Alexi. So if he maybe didn't take that earlier... You never know, round, right? You never know, right? But I, I've just never seen that specific nade going, well, not even that specific one, but them, uh, that destination. I've never seen it actually have that much potency. So I, I got to play against um, oh, Gamers Club, the second tier Brazilian team when they were living in North America. And I was over there with the Renegades guys when mm -hmm. we kind of first made our shift. And they had a really cool move where uh, they would actually use deep smokes um, through those windows and a Molotov above pop through those windows and force you back into the corridor that connects the long hallway where you normally mm -hmm. jump that into box halls and you're not going to go all the way back to toilets because you're kind of just waiting for the Molotov to clear. Right. So they get you in that corridor. Rush, can you fly to that corridor for me maybe? Uh, are you able to do that? Well, Sorry, guys, I was not listening. Where, where do you want me to go? <laughs> go above pop. Go above, above pop. pop for me. Hey, up on my way. Okay. Let me know when you're there. Up. I'm trying not no, to... No, get there uh, quick, because I, I want to I explain no, that. There's no rush. Apparently, he's restarting his PC, so oh, okay. he got a whole thing. So, so they would drop a smoke through the yeah. window, it would land here, and then a Molotov okay. would land behind that smoke, uh, above Pop More Rush. So smoke here to obscure vision, a Molotov would land here, and then okay. what would happen is you would normally dip back onto this, this corridor with that little doormat there, Rush. You see that one in the, to your right? Yeah. Yeesh. So you'd dip back and stand yeah. here. And what they would do is they'd have two players push up so low ramp with keyboard. HEs, they'd push up low ramp with nades, and they'd double nade that corridor. That's they'd sick. Pin you back. It was really quite, it was very frustrating to verse, let me tell you. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a nice innovative play and something which um, I've actually seen mouse sports. We, we had a, a game last season, I think, with Frozen doing a certain play up the Pop Dog. There was lots mm. of cool bits and pieces. Are Mouse Sports one of the teams that I can expect this from? Because, again, I didn't get to cast Matoja during Cologne. Do they have any of these, like, little fun <laughs> ideas? Like, what to expect? Because like I said, I've not seen Astralis, Big, or Mouse. No, well, Mouse is one of the ones you can probably just forget about for a while. Really? Not? Yeah. Well, okay, off the radar. Mass, yeah, it just, so yeah. it's a little bit, all right. It just, yeah, changed their roster. So we can forget about them. We'll keep yeah. our eyes on them. Um, There's some geeky stuff. Obviously, it's Who's cool to see Astralis. Um, they'll be they'll be handing out some of the geeky stuff. Yeah, I'm curious uh, with with some of these. Well, I I know that we liked what we saw out of Spirit, um, but it's not necessarily like super strat heavy from Spirit. They have some very good individuals. Some Dai Youngs in the mix. Uh, mix Magix is there. Uh, I just balance on the AWP. So those are some of the names in the mix on on that side of things. But there's so many teams in all these groups. I was expecting more today from Godsent, to be completely honest with you. It didn't feel like they, they arrived at the party ready You're to... They're okay map one, right? Oh, with the comeback, right? But yeah. before then, it wasn't too much. NIP, historically, at least before Hampus had joined, were probably a little bit more tactical. Okay. Um, now it feels like they've, they've dipped on back a little bit and they have more flux to their play, which is, which is great. Complexity, you'll see a good amount of like, counter stratting. Uh, they'll be well prepared for a lot of the teams that they're going up against. Who else do we have here on the list? Um, I'm trying to think of the teams that I haven't got like a, an idea of like personality to. I think the lot of the ones we saw through Cologne, mm. at least kind of who did the deeper run, you've got the idea of. But yeah, I guess I guess Pro League, we get to more hands-on experience with these guys, right? You'd, Lots more games. A, a great deal about them, yeah, for sure. 
Who else is in here? Uh, well, Ants, obviously, they fell very yeah. flat, but it feels like the expectation for Ants is now gone. So that pressure is kind of alleviated in a way. They're no longer, you know, looked at as, oh, they're the ones that kicked Alexi B and then struggled. Now it's like, right. okay, well, Yampi's in the mix. You get to see the double orb with Yampi and Alu. That's not a, not a bad one over there. Uh, I want to see what's a what Ago is cooking. I want to see mainly what Ago and, and and Spirit are cooking because those are the two more underdog names here in the mix out of the sixteen teams we have. Right. I guess they get a little bit more freedom to come up with something. And I, and I again dipping back into regions like I, I I imagine you know the CIS region and the Polish region and these sort of areas. It's like there was always that top heavy team that kind of filtered any of the talent up, and if there was any, it would just kind of go into that. But now that like layer's been removed now as such, the, you know, the old Navis of the world, the old Virtus Pro, of course. I, I look to see who kind of bubbles up to the top now. Well, we're going to bubble to a break and we're going to give it about three minutes to get that PC up and running. You can go ahead, grab a drink and we'll be RB to find a conclusion of whether we see a map three. away for OG to do what they did in the quarterfinals of Cologne G2. However, on the defense does definitely bode positively. The recent results, however, in the first few rounds of play have not. They broke their silence just as Valder timed out, but we're back up and running. Of course, we'll be fading that music down as we're back into the game. So we'll be getting that done ASAP. And Kenny has drawn first blood. Got Pansy and Sponge hanging out with myself, Machine. And already looks like this duel. Oh, it's so hard on the Z-axis. Has been one out. Next, actually pushing up in those brown holes. Nice to see a bit of a proactive approach to G2 off the break. Yeah, G2 coming in fired up, it looks like. Back with the good buy. Back with the players in the right place. 
And man two, back to the wall. Dead. As a Dormouse, Jack is going to get it. And that's, that's exactly what G2 probably needed, honestly. Weren't they a little bit uh, out of sorts so far on this side? Yeah, and well... It is their map choice. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta hope for a bit more. <laughs> and here. we did, we did paint you all the lovely picture at the start of things. Of we weren't too sure which way they were going to take it, considering not the battering but the beating they got last time. Here we go. Double digits on both sides now. Twelve for OG, ten for G two. Only seven kills for Amanek. A little bit quiet here, but he has an opportunity to step up on the CT side and find some impact, breaking that window. This was place where he lobbed that nade through before and here it is again for all of y'all nice little run jump hop skip and a jump away that one didn't land where it was meant to. a little bit too high and there wasn't any damage to be done anyway as holder respected it so three over towards ivy two towards the box holes no one in main no one in pop anti-flash mbk also watching the main push and ooh, getting aggressive and what's jacks he's gonna think better of it now that the molly and smoker dipped on down if we think about what G2 know, there's been some movement over towards the box holes. Ivy has had some pressure. Pop is looking clean as a whistle. We might get some contact here towards Ivy any moment. Jax lost vision, but he's heard all this. He's seen all that util being put through, so he knows there's players here, but it's all about the timing. Is he going to play it back in? Hunter in all... Wow. I don't know how MBK oh saw him, but he did. And man two takes down Jax. How is the T-side coming out on top of these fights? Well, I mean, one was a wild smoke spray, so can't really do much about that. That, however, is just straight good aim. And Amanek actually managed to double up. He could get the third. He's dug him out of a hole here. It's not over yet. Man two, they know there was one around this green train. They might swing in together. Smart stuff. They're disappearing in plain sight right now. OG know that they were forward. They have to clear all of these. 20 seconds. Yeah, nooks and crannies. This is great. Smoke for man two. So likely you want to want to get that bomb down. And it's Valder's responsibility, Mantu, to bodyguard. They're going for that safe plant in it. Mantu's surely going to approach Backtrax as a threat here. Bomb has been he is, considering it. It's a rough fight. It's going to get awkward now because Nexa can push up. Flash, he plays ahead of it. God, he's going for some close quarters orping. This is a real test of his abilities here, and he does sweep into Amanek. Nexa can easily find him, though, despite the left eye disadvantage. Valda to clutch. Valda's playing this to the sweet, sweet song of the bomb. The Ooh. time's his best friend. He gambled. He thought he might be e box. That was his best That's bet. It, right? That was his only chance. And well there played. Nicely done. Oof. Looks like the 2 0 is looking more and more likely now. Oh, gee. 13 rounds on the board, able to scavenge the AWP. The money on the CT side of things will garner them yet another buy. So. It's all right. And I did say Amanek was a little bit quiet. This was a huge three-piece. Probably a little bit disappointed they couldn't convert off the back of that. He was on one right here, hitting some bangers of shots. But it was this frag right here that was his undoing. And if they could have traded out on Mantu with actually opening up on that frag, being able to isolate Volda in the one-on-two, then yeah, a lot more likely. But so difficult to find a player once the bomb's down in yard. And looks like they're going to be changing the pace here, OG. So... Immediately after some light, Kenny puts his life on the line. He finds a frag. It might be a fast dinner now. He's pulled over here. Nex has already come over towards this, and he's ready to go if he has to be. Molly's going up. He's trying to bide time. He's trying to hinder any quick reaction hit coming out from the tees, but you can see Man to an MBK looking towards the upper side. Does have some support in the form of Hunter now, pulling himself around, and Jack. So three players here. It's a great deal of resistance now on the B site. Bombs dropped in now, they have to commit. No two ways about it. Yeah. That's another one. Just Alexi. Locked out on the ramp. He was responsible for the flank. Now he's responsible for the whole round. Dire straight for him to find himself upon. He still wants to confirm it's clear. But the bomb being loose. Sound cue for Hunter to convey to his squad. Alexi might have to play the long game here, I'm afraid. Strap yourselves in, folks. We might watch 30 seconds of a man walking around the halls with an orb and a stiletto knife. It's always nice to take a moment to uh, practice your meditations if you have never done that before. It's really easy. Oh, it's very foggy in that break room there, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know if they banned smoking in that room or not. So. Yeah, maybe. Makes sense. Where's train based? 
I swear I see Cyrillic on writing. Okay. Well, I'm not I, sure. I'm really not 100% sure, though. The train yard. Hmm. Let's go. There, let's look for some clues. Isn't there the newspaper. outside by T? Read the newspaper, Rush. We'll get a good origin. Okay. Get closer. Uh, Any pixels uh, suggest it's... Okay. Yeah, that's Cyrillic for sure. 100%. Because like, I, I know Cyrillic <laughs> is just a blur to me. Yeah. So that, well, it, that's it. I thought there was a sign of... Above T, like when you leave T spawn. There is, yeah. There's it a... does have a B, though. Ah, ah Cyrillic. Cyrillic. Okay, well. Anywhere in the CIS stuff. region, I guess. Detectives. Wow, it's kind of funny. When you play zoomed in, it kind of feels like a handheld camera in the <laughs> server. Look at this. It's like we're on a little handheld. I'm holding a steady cam here. <laughs> Jackass episode. <laughs> oh, that oh. Molly's missed. That's not deep enough. So they wanted to hold them back in main. They're not coming out far, so it's not the end of the world right here. Is a four-man alien early from G2. Very standard stuff on train, but it looks like OG are getting poised to hit the yard. You can see how they're postured and set up. There's been no aggression coming their way. Issa is now lining up a smoke or a flash over towards the bin position. Kenny's in a very good spot to deal with this, though. Oh, okay. This could be problematic. It's three towards inner. They're pushing B. Yeah, he's filling the gap while next run Hunter have a look. So he'll probably fall back in as they call it clear. Now about now. So no wound, other than the fact he's no longer on that boot. Is he going to try it? He is. <sighs> okay, oh, back up just in the lucky. nick of time. Just in the nick of time. Will he be smoked off? He should have a view over it. A CT smoke, actually. That's problematic. That's going to help them get across. Oh, this timing would... 46 seconds? Come on. Plenty oh, of room for manoeuvres here, Lauren. Yeah. Don't get your uh, knickers just, in a twist. Look, I get a little worried when I have Nexa in their spawn. I can oh, I'm worried. Don't one. you worry. Like, I'm, I'm a little worried about the time when we're at 35. There's two of the CTs in their spawn now. The T side is still locked in here. Oh, they no, better have a plan. Oh. They went back, wanted the flash. Now I'm afraid it's curtains. It's really... Brutal for Issa. No one wants to be dying with their knife out in a smoke to retrieve a bomb from T-Spawn. 20 seconds left in the round. They're pinned. Yeah, this one's a tough one. Do you gonna fight? You have to just, yeah, dig your heels in and wait. They should try and take these guns after time if they can. Unable to do so. Kenny doesn't know there's one close. I, I like the attempt. I think it was worth it considering the cash situation right here on OG. Just have a look how much money they have. So the reason that we would be suggesting they go for the hunt and try and take away those guns after the time would mean that the players from OG take absolutely nothing through to the following. They won't get the loss bonus from that round, which is already minimal. And they would have no weapons and it would actually have a flow on effect into future rounds here. But the fact that they do have these two guns left over, Alexi's actually force bought in. Everybody's force bought in. This could be doable. And if OG win this one, well, they could be on to steal away the game here. So eyes need to be on Mantu and Valda, the two with the upgraded weaponry or saved weaponry, as it were. East is over towards Ivy, just trying to sell and hold them at bay. And towards inner they go. So they don't have a lot of Molotovs to work with. We might see the smoke that goes and lands next to the low ramp train so that Mantu can post on up and scope towards connector. But they need to deal with Nexa, who's up close personal on that low ramp train. If they can't take him out of the equation here, they won't be getting into the site. Well, there's Issa. Found, pinned, put down over by IB. It, it, it's all going to come to, to be. That's, that, that's what it is at this point. Mantu, no freebies to be found. Kenny's already over here. Whoa. Takes a quick finger to deal with a Valda jiggle. That's a sentence that would make no sense to your mum if you walked in the room. Oh. And what? the end of that. Dank flank, Hunter pocketing himself. An important double does put right. us back onto an even keel. Weapons... Not so plentiful for OG. Now, this has been quick maths. How many rounds in a row? Of three in succession for the French squad. Good teamwork there, setting Jax up for that frag. And this here, Kenny's playing up on the ramp. He's not on the coil. He's postured more forward. And that does tend to catch the players off guard as they are jiggling towards that high ramp. So that's two rounds in a row that Hunter's been in the back lines, being able to, to stabilize the attack. And it will just be the save. They're going towards inner. They're going fast. Nexa can get some eco frags right here and mop things up. We'll put his Molotov down. HG towards the high ramp. It's going to connect. Oh, wow. Yeah, they might actually get a plant off of that kill. 
I was very impressed. Might. <laughs> that knee, the timing couldn't have been better. I was really on board with that, that bomb being planted. I was like, all right, you're, we'll take that. No, 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 no. Free fire dink, love that, love that. Not quite. So G2, that's four in a row. Now perhaps starting to have a real voice in this CT side. They've won six of the last seven rounds of play ever since that break. So composed and aware of the circumstance, G2 looking to do what they did before. Not another one like this. Not another OG close to the victory and then harrowing oh, don't. taken from them. They're all, it's all flashing before their eyes again. They're remembering the, the highs they felt on train and then remembering just how high they got on dust too before it was taken from them by a millisecond diffuse of Almanac and an overtime victory of G2. That was a different tournament though. We're here at Pro League. G2 take the lead for the first time in a while. Let's see if they can hold on to it for a while themselves. Uh, Lexi's going straight out, going to ignore the flashbangs and glide nicely in towards what was Olof, not to be anymore. It's been laden with flames. Three flying in from very Oh, Pulls nice a great work. move from Kenny. Boosted up on the bomb train there. That's taking the AWPA out of the equation on the other side of things, but they're still going fast. I can't believe his luck. Collects Alexi. Valder perhaps. Ooh, running out of bullets. And a bit of a janky setup for Issa, but on a 2v2 now, Kenny's going to be Molotov out of position. He actually oh, chooses no. to swing in. Valder could really isolate that jewel here, but... Oh, Kenny, okay. That's better. Really playing with fire there, isn't he? And now let's see what's happening on the other side of the CT players. It's Nexa. <laughs> Now, last time this happened, it was a real-life ruiner for Issa. So let's see if he's more prepared for this flank. The timing on this. Like he was considering it. Oh, it's like cat and mouse between these two. They are happy to let them into the site. We've seen multiple teams kind of go for these. In these 2v2s now, you know, the likes of Cloud9 were doing it in America very, very early days, where you just kind of, you disappear. You let them have the site. You let them do that. And now, you can, that's your cue to know that all of this space, you don't have to bother procedurally clearing your corners. There's no more question marks. You know where you got to go. And they'll be pins ringing from both directions. Low health on both. Plenty of util for Nexa once they get some information, but it's going to be Issa who's caught first. And poor old Valder. Cautiously eliminated. That's oh. lovely. Wow. Yeah, that was very, very clean, but you could see... Because they gave them all that space that you were talking about, Alex, they had no idea where to look. Where is this retake coming from? Train, there's so many places to worry about. CT connector, the backtracks, old bomb, could be coming around Ivy. Are they already tucked in the site? Did they give us room? Were they hiding in plain sight? Are they coming pop? Are they coming main? You could see both of them were looking the exact opposite way of where the retake actually was coming from. Look at this, Isa, none the wiser, has to pick one of two options. And that's not the option he needed. So you can see Alexi here. A little bit of frustration needs to be thinking how they can be clawing themselves back into this one because it looks like map number three of Mirage is well and truly on the cards here. One more round for G2. Done a good job to get to this point. Ooh, close on the need again. Does do a little bit of damage, but nowhere near as much as when it caught our attention. Still a one bullet headshot on the M4 now. Ooh, or all of them. Three of them, yeah. Fair play. It's already two towards that B bomb site right here for G2. Two towards Ivy. Just an exchange of utility, trying to bait out whatever they can. There's still a minute left on the clock. They've actually given up a lot of access over towards. The Ivy position G2. This is great. Just how far back Jax is. This is a nice call from, this is a good round so far from Alexi and OG. They've got Presence Ivy. They've thrown Util in her twice, pulled out all the incendiaries. Oh, the old bomb smoke that's just been dropped, Alex, is indicative of an inner split. Oh, so much for Jax to deal with, but precision, the name of his game. Ran to anti flash, but doesn't matter when Jax is hitting every shot he takes. Good spray control as well. Kenny shooting from the hip. Two more to find. Looks like Jax have. Done enough. Just Alexi and shot in the booty. That's G2 redemption found on train.